these are the first two cars that we've built as a shop. You know, the Galaxy is the most outrageous, crazy, intense build that I've ever been involved with. The Mustang at least was a car that I had built the OG, so, and a lot of it was the same parts and stuff. So I felt like at least that one was one that I was familiar with that I could give some sort of estimate on, but the Galaxy, I just didn't know. Mm -hmm. So we wound up like everybody. The first time we had those cars running and moving under their own power was Sunday. <laughs> right. <laughs> and move in is Monday or, yeah. or Sunday. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So Sunday. Most people are firing them up back home and like, we have to get them on a trailer to get there. Sunday, we rolled them out of the shop on straight onto a trailer. And then uh, then on Monday, they unloaded and went into the, the SEMA hall. So that was pretty crazy and exciting and scary and <laughs> Uh, all of the emotions. Welcome to High Octane Hustle. I'm Fastlane Jane. And I'm Design Muse. And I'm so excited about our guest today because oh, he is yeah. a designer and a builder. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Chris Ashton from Ruffian Hello. Cars. Hello. It's so great to have you here today. I appreciate amazing. you appreciate you, uh, offering to have me on. Oh my gosh. The most exciting thing I found was that you're an autocrosser. Yeah. That's what I've that. done for, it's got to be, tw it's like 28 years now, really? autocrossing. Yeah. So usually uh, I start out with uh, SCCA in San Diego down at Qualcomm Stadium uh, at my first game studio job. We, the guys that a uh, couple guys that I worked with at that game studio had nice cars and uh, they were already autocrossers. And so when I hired on there, it was like easy to go with them and run my car. So, so were you already an autocrosser before that? No. Or they kind of got you into no, that? No, I didn't then? know anything about it. Okay. Until I, until I went to work there and I, and I met them and they, and they were like, and I was, and they knew I was into cars, obviously. And yeah. so then they're like, you, you should go autocrossing. I'm like, what is it? So then we went down. Yeah. <laughs> this leads us into so many questions, really. I mean, it definitely, just, we got to throw the script out and just start with, okay. Like we know, huh? <laughs> we just got to go dive in. Definitely. Yeah. Well, first off, <laughs> I know, huh? We, we wanted to kind of know, was it the art first or the cars? Because yeah. we know, mm. I mean, was that, was that age? What were you into? Uh, my mom, it's funny, my mom sent me not too long ago, too many years ago, she sent me a, a package of all like childhood stuff. And it was like report cards and stuff like that. But also on the back of like, like homework was a bunch of car drawings. Love this. And so it was definitely, <laughs> uh, you know, cars have always been like, I've always been into cars ever since I could you know, try to get a thing or grab a thing. Uh, so I had, I had car toys and stuff like that. And then as, as a little bit older, like I just started to draw cars and. Was there somebody that exposed you to these cars? Like your dad? Uh, or yeah. Uncle? So uh, yeah, my dad's definitely a car nut as well. And so I think that easily transfers over. And interestingly, yeah. he worked as a used car salesman when I was growing up. So he would always bring demos home you know, oh, that's different cool. cars. So, yeah. So that was always, uh, there was always something interesting. So I, I'm sure that that stuff plays a role in it, but, but regardless, you know, I, I always had like little matchbox cars and I put together model cars and painted them and stuff. Yeah. Uh, so I was always into it and then I was always drawing them as well. Wasn't that cool to go back and kind of see that? And it, it's funny because those memories, like that thought process, like you do, you think about it because I think some of us forget where we're inspired early on, mm -hmm. but you know, that, that kind of like, you know, it brings back all those memories. Yeah. In. The, the, it's weird because the further we go down this road of building cars, the more I see in the past, which yeah. is pretty crazy. Like literally, um, a lot of the paintings that I did in high school and college and stuff of cars, I've either owned those cars now or I've built those cars now, which is, That's and, rad. I, and I didn't, I didn't do it knowingly. You know what I mean? It's like now and in yeah. post, I look right. back at these and go, Oh yeah, I actually drew that. Or I did it's a like painting a of that. Self-fulfilled prophecy. Yeah. Right? So He's kind manifesting of, it. Right. Kind of weird. Yeah. I love that. That's so cool. Um, 
it's really cool that you're a designer. Like you said early on, that was just something you just love to draw. And right. it was just something that came naturally to you or? Yeah, actually, uh, so my, both my sisters are really artistic. My mom is and her dad, my grandfather was. And so it's definitely, and actually most of my cousins are. So it's definitely kind of runs in the family, the yeah. art stuff. Um, my older sister was, uh, she was like a true artist where she was, she would do paintings and stuff, you know, on how, like sort of inspired by how she felt or whatever. And she could oh. just sit in front of a blank canvas and do something cool. I could never do that. Mine, I went to college for, uh, illustration and mm -hmm. graphic design so mine was always like yeah. <laughs> sounds like somebody i know yeah <laughs> that's where yeah I, I went to uh, uh cal poly for graphic design nice yeah. yeah so i could i could draw still lifes and stuff really really well but it was difficult in front of like a you know to come up with stuff and be super creative that way but for some reason graphic design you can tell from the cars i think yeah. You know, they all have kind of bold colors and, and stripes of some sort, some sort of graphics package on them and stuff like that. Like, that's all. It's just it's just me. It's the same as a as an art project, college art project. Is just Right. Well, it's like the stance of it. It's, it's all the proportions of things that really make a difference in a design. Mm -hmm. that, that it's all those little things that you can definitely see in everything that you do. Right. Yeah. So, I, I mean, we... All that stuff's critical to to what I think is a cool looking car. Um, so I feel like pretty lucky that I've also always had a, a mindset of being able to take apart stuff and figure out how it works and put it back together. Even as a kid with toys and stuff, mechanical stuff, I understand. So I think there's a a bit of engineering in my brain as well, which helps me, you know. So I got to use both. Like it's got to it's got to look really cool, but it also has to work. You know, so I get I really get into and dive deep into into how things work. And that helps me understand, like, how to do it better. Yeah, no, I totally agree with that. Um, I really love that you you talked about, like, wanting to build it yourself, too. I mean, you really kind of dove into that. I mean, where did that part of it come from of wanting to do sheet metal or things like because it's different. I mean, it's a, it's a different kind of skill set. Um, mm -hmm. but like for me, for instance, what I loved about, uh, going to school for graphic design is that it taught me just different mediums and like how to go about understanding them. So I don't know what your approach was for that. Yeah, I don't, uh, it's hard to say, but I think that, um, you know, growing up, uh, we didn't have much money you know, and, it, and, and I started working on my car just to keep it running and the same, like, you know, my, you know, my sister's car would break down or whatever. And then I would help out on that stuff. So I don't know, it's just this gradual transition of, of working on stuff to, to make it continue to work. Cause you need to go to work and you need to go to school and that, that kind of stuff. And then later on when I got a good job, then it becomes putting on car parts to make the car go faster or to sound better you know, and that just continues to, to evolve. But when I built the first, my first, like I consider my real build was that 1970 Mustang. Yeah. And, uh, and I learned how to use the, like you said, I learned how to use the planishing hammer and the English wheel and stuff on that. But that was at that point when I built that car, I was on a pretty tight budget. I mean, I had more budget than I'd ever had for anything before. It was the first time where I could actually sit down with a with a plan to build a car. I had had other cool cars that I had worked on for like seven years in order to get it to a point where I felt like it was kind of done, but there was never a plan from the beginning. So this was the first one, but it was still a tight budget. So uh, a lot of stuff is just because I couldn't do it. I couldn't afford to do it. I couldn't afford to pay somebody it, else to do it. Yeah, <laughs> and, I, and that begs the question, is that why you chose masking tape when you were building your wheel flares. Oh. Tell, tell us about that. Um, I want to say that I saw somebody do that, uh, on, on, I think what, I think where I saw that was, um, when I was building this car, it was based on like Trans Am racing back in the day. So yeah. 69, seventies, the Mustangs. And I got onto a forum where the, 
where people own those cars, either real cars or they're building replicas of them. And so they're very much in like real deep into the, like the way that they were built and the why and the how and everything. And they were super nice and welcoming, even though I, that's not exactly what I was doing, but I wanted to know, I wanted to learn all about it, you know? So one of the things that they do is they, they try to make as much room inside of the wheel wells for wider tires. I mean, sure. those cars were running big, big slicks, right? As yeah. wide as they could get. So front on the old Mustangs from the frame rail, there's like a one and a half inch gap and then inner wheel well starts. And so what they would do is, is cut that gap out and, and push the wheel well flush to the frame. And then they would have this gap to fill. And somebody on there had used masking tape to just to tape over that gap and then draw a line hmm. and then use that as a pattern. Yeah. And it made a lot of sense to me. Um, that was that engineer brain going. Yeah. 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 Oh, that's, I mean, it's a nice way to make like an exact pattern. I, I think I use tape for everything. Yeah. I, yeah. I typically have tape around my as right. a bracelet because right. there's all kinds of different types of tape and right. you can use it for so many different things. Yeah. Yeah. So it just made sense sort of bridging a gap with tape and then using that to make a pattern. Um, my girlfriend actually uh, also, she makes dresses, uh, makes her own clothes. So it's kind of a similar thing with clothes, which she'll, she'll have like either some light paper or some plastic that you can see through and she can kind of wrap it on the body or mm -hmm. on her dress form or, or whatever and draw lines on top of it and cut it out. So I've seen yeah. that stuff for years. And so it, it's just kind of whatever works, like yeah. however, whatever you need to do to get it done. Right. Yeah. And I feel like, I mean, most of it us either start from a place like that where yes. like uh, we do something because we don't have enough money to figure it out and we know we want to get it done. Or we also do something because everyone else isn't doing it right and we want it done our way. <laughs> yeah, I agree. So, so there's like those two things for me anyway. But Right, right. <laughs> yeah, I understand that with doing things around the house and, you know. Totally. Just... You yeah. learn how to fix the garbage disposal oh, or yeah. something, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah plumbers. Yeah, they're yeah. expensive. So there's all kinds of things like that. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> My bad. You, you mentioned go. the the uh, the OG build, right? Right. That's your that's your original, right? Yeah. So in 2019, like you said, you built this on a budget, which is crazy because you look at this car and it does. And, and you said it's it's your budget, right? Of right. course, we'd all do more, but you put the time into it to mm -hmm. do that. And it went straight to the SEMA show, to the Toyo, Pass, uh, Toyo Tread Pass Easy. booth. <laughs> Easy for you to say, right? One of it's my favorite sections, <laughs> though, seriously. If right. you know the SEMA yeah. show, you go to that, you know, that section. So that's a really cool debut for a vehicle like that. Yeah, and I, I didn't really, I didn't build the car thinking I would go to SEMA. I didn't have... I, you know, I didn't have expectations of it, of, of even having like, I was using my own Instagram account to post photos just for friends and family to see like what I was doing. Yeah. And after SEMA, that Instagram account, it kind of blew up and went crazy. And then I'm getting comments from people I don't know and people start to recognize me in grocery stores. And it's like the whole thing kind of goes crazy. So it was all an unexpected journey. Um, Were you still in the gaming space at that time? Yeah. And, and I, that was what I actually, was supporting your Yeah, and habit. I still, I still <laughs> am, yeah. Oh, wow. Uh, so I still uh, work at the game studio. And so I kind of have to divide my time carefully between both. But it's, that's what's cool about having a team is that even if you're not there, the team can make progress on stuff, you know? Yep as long as you've given them all the tools and the information up front. So I try to do my best job with both teams and try to make, but the whole thing was um, with the shop anyway, was just that, you know, I built that Mustang and it was super cool and very satisfying and exciting. Uh, but growing up, I mean, there's a long list, a bucket list of cars that ah. I would like to, you know, own and or build. And and nowadays for me, it's not even enough. Like if it's a modern car, I'm, I'm happy just to buy it and drive it. But the older stuff, you know, it's like it's like the old muscle cars look so cool. But if you drive just a factory stock one, they don't drive very well. I mean, no, not no. not compared to a modern day sports car, no. you know. So I think that's the thing is you can't sort of 
live with it if you want to drive it hard, <laughs> yeah. you know, and I'm into autocrossing as well. So I, there's something really cool. It's funny. When I first started autocrossing, you really didn't see muscle cars out there at the autocross at all. It was just, it was like Miatas, of course, Cor oh, yeah. 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 Corvettes. Totally. Yeah. yeah. Um, and now like the cam class is like, is huge. Uh, it seems like any, now they're outnumbering the modern cars, which is pretty crazy. Yeah. That's cool. Um, so when you started this build, the OG build, that's mm -hmm. where it came from. What you just said right now, like, like it came from your love of all of these things. So right. what were your plans for that build? You said it wasn't meant to go to SEMA, but I mean, right. why did you build it then? Uh, I just want, this was my dream car, basically my one like splurge in my mind, at least my one sort of chance to build a car just for me just yeah. the way that I wanted it. And it was supposed to do all the things, you know, so <clears throat> it has air conditioning on it and heat on it, for example, um, which I haven't done on any of the cars since because the realities of it are that I only drive if it's a nice day, then yeah. I feel like, Hey, I should take, take the car out for it. But back then I was like, that's my one car and it's got to do it all because sure. it's my one car, you yeah. know? So, um, yeah, the intent was to have a super cool car that I could drive to work, that I could go autocrossing with, that I could drive in the summer, I could drive in the winter. And we're talking about California, yeah. Yeah. summers and winters. <laughs> yeah. Well, yes, I mean, that's what yeah. it was supposed to yeah. be, you know, and I, and I, and I flared it um, partially because it, obviously it looks cool, but also because I wanted to make it handle really well. And autocrossing is all about like lateral grip, like it, the horsepower, you know, Miatas are just as fast as Corvettes at the mm -hmm. autocross. So it's not really a horsepower scenario, you know? Um, so I just built that, I, I just built that car to kind of do it all and be my one sort of cool, my super cool car and everything <laughs> else would just be drive to work, do whatever, you yeah. know? Um, but yeah, I, I, when it got close to being done, uh, I have a friend that I, have bought a number of wheels from, uh, works with signature wheels and he knows Stan at Toyo tires. Mm -hmm. And he, yeah. he was like, Oh, you should take that to, you should take that car to SEMA. Yeah. And he just wanted me to, of course, to show off, have a car there with their wheels on it. Right. Totally. Yeah, um, yeah. but I, but I thought that would be cool. You know, I, I, I had actually been to SEMA, I think twice before just, just, uh, because I knew some people in the industry and I was able to get a pass and it seemed like a, cool thing to do yeah, so I've been exactly. a couple of times but I had never shown anything there so yeah. uh so yeah I kind of jumped at the chance to take the car there and and show it at SEMA and that's like I said that's when things sort of took off and started to go in its own direction um, a life of its own yeah <laughs> yeah it's pretty funny that I remember my dad telling me that it was gonna that that car was gonna change my life and i I didn't believe him at the time. I love that statement. Yeah. yeah. And I, and I, even after like SEMA is a little bit weird, like I guess social media, the way, the way everything works is stuff takes time, Yeah, you know? And it's like, I went to SEMA and I did meet some cool people, but like, then I drove the car home. It's yeah. weird. You have this, I don't know if, I don't know if you've ever had the same scenario, but like you get, you, you push so hard to go to SEMA and then it's it's all exciting and the whole week of SEMA is bananas. Yep. And then I come home and I kind of get depressed. Sure. Oh, yeah. yeah. After so a I big think, any anything yeah. after a big win, it's like I don't know, the escalation of everything and then you're back home by yourself and you're like, what do I do now? Like Right. <laughs> uh, you're on yeah. this big high and totally. now it's just this big yeah. Yeah. letdown, but you're yeah, it's your weird. wave has crashed. It, yeah, totally. Like, so, okay, yeah. what do I do now? Yeah. <laughs> so I remember coming home and thinking, nah, my dad was wrong. Like, see, nothing's mm. nothing's changed, you know, and I was in sort of in the dumps. Yeah. Um, but then, like, you know, it was literally like three months later when my Instagram account started to blow up. Yeah. So, it's so just weird. different people started to post things. Yeah. And, and other, it got traction. Yeah, huh? it's basically other big sites pick it up yep. and then share it and then tag you on it. Yep. Um, at least, at least if they're doing their job, right. Yeah. Um, tag you on it. And then, and then that brings people to your, yeah. to your own account. Yeah. So that started going crazy. And then I, I actually had ordered, uh, so while I was 
basically while I was finishing the Mustang, um, the gaming business kept doing better and better and better. Um, so another dream car of mine was a GT40. And again, I see the Ford theme here. And <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't. I, it doesn't I, really say that on your site and other things, but I'm like, oh, you know. I say, yeah, I tell people, I tell everybody, it's not, it's not intentional. It's just where it lands, you know. Yeah. Um, you like what you like. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I we're building, a, we're building an El Camino. I, okay, what year? Yeah, uh, it's a '72. My first car was a 1972 El Camino. Really? Yeah. And the only reason my husband approached me was to get my phone number after he saw me walking to my car. Oh, nice. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Cars have changed all of our lives in yeah. lots of different ways. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. So we're, we're building. I, I got a 70 Cuda that we've been trying to build. It's oh, man. partially built. And we've been trying to work on that one for the last year and a half. Uh, so we've got other stuff in the works. It's not all Fords, but there is a lot of Fords. <laughs> so I think we should maybe make a field trip to the shop too. I think that would be fun. Yeah. You're always welcome. Yeah. I'm That's, ready for those it. Those are the words yeah. I like to hear. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty. <laughs> That's it's, awesome. It's, I always tell people it's a pretty ordinary shop. Like it's not that big, um, but it is, I mean, there's cool projects and cool cars and everybody it's cool to you. As <laughs> evidenced by my co-host, my co-host, you don't have to be big to be a powerhouse. Yeah. <laughs> That's rad. Yeah. It doesn't matter, you know, um, e even for myself. So I, I paint up in the desert. I, mm -hmm. you know, I have, I have literally have a booth between like two, uh, 40 foot containers. And I went to someone else. I went, I literally went to um, someone else's place and they were painting in a garage. And I'm like, you are building, you know, million dollar cars and they are painted in a garage. I was like, I can do that. Yeah. It right. doesn't matter. Yeah. Yeah. So yes, it, it really doesn't matter where your resourcefulness, yes. right? Yeah. Using if you're good you at have. what you do, mm -hmm. you figure it out. Yeah. <laughs> Baja Forge, signature vehicle builds and off-road products built to forge your own path. Baja Forge was basically made because we loved off-roading. We loved the open roads. If you're looking for off-road products to help you get out on the terrain, visit BajaForge.com. Follow us on Instagram at Baja Forged for our latest builds. Ladies and gentlemen, it is an absolute honor to officially announce the giveaway of this 2018 GMC Denali behind me and this $10,000 in cash. Head on over to the site, envisionsupplyco.com, for your chance to win. Every $1 you spend will get you one entry into winning this 700 horsepower truck and this cash. Your chance is now. Good luck. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, those two cars were both built in my garage, uh, two-car garage. And actually, the GT40, partway through that build, uh, I live in, I, at the time, I lived in Silverado Canyon. And we had those bad wildfires. Oh, yeah. And uh, it burned uh, down the side of the hill right to the back of our house. Oh, and it wow. burned the, the eaves of the house and some <laughs> of the shingles. And it melted, like, everything that was along the back side of the house, it it cracked some windows, melted the hoses and stuff in the yard. Holy cow. That's crazy. Um, but the house survived and we celebrated and we thought, yay, like, you know, awesome. We made it like that. Is, it's not going to get worse than that. And then winter time came and they talk about burn oh. scars oh, yeah. in a, any That's place right. that has a hill. Yeah. And the next really bad storm, the rainstorm that came, I mean, half that mountain came down That's and crazy. Uh, well, the landslides, yeah, yeah, went broke it, it. It busted through both garage doors wow. and filled the garage with five feet of mud. Wow. And the GT40 was in there on a, oh, gosh. it was on a, <laughs> like buried uh, alive, huh? Almost. It was, wow. I happened to have a four foot lift oh, in wow. the garage. And since I was working on the GT40, it was on the four four foot lift. So the mud got high enough where it went about 10 inches into the car. So the floors got about 10 inches, okay. the radiator and stuff. Uh, so the bottom of the car, uh, and the wheels that were off and all the parts that were off and on the ground under the car, all those are ruined. Yeah. Um, I also had a 911, a 1976 911 Porsche that was next door in the bay next to it. Yeah. And it, it just floated. Oh. <laughs> 
That's well, kind of a relief, I right? I love it. Yeah, it when we sink. when we got the garage doors open, it was sitting higher than the GT40, oh, which was wow. on the lift. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah, so that's crazy. Huh. That's really a relief. <laughs> yeah, so that was that was that's in that book actually. Photos of that are in that in that of GT40 Porsche build yeah. book. That's cool. Yeah, and the Porsche's in there too. Yeah. yeah. Um, we actually uh, two months later we we had the no it was longer than that we had the house rebuilt uh, through insurance and stuff had the house completely rebuilt and then it came down again. And then this time it broke the kitchen door in half, the garage door inside of the house, broke that in half and it flooded the house, went all the way through the house from one end of the house to the other end. And it went, what was crazy is the pictures, um, it went higher than the sinks, the mud did. And then it, and then after time, the water comes back out and there was about a foot or a foot and a half of mud in the house. But the sinks were full of mud. The toilets were full of mud. The That's bathtub was so full to the crazy. top of mud. So we left. We <laughs> yeah, that was it. <laughs> like, and you're like, I need a come- different garage. Yeah. yeah, how do you come back from that? <laughs> yeah, two times is enough. Wow. I know. First, yeah. What do so, they say? Are you First in a time, again? shame on you. <laughs> what? Yeah. <laughs> second time shame on me yeah. right yeah <laughs> yeah so after the second time i told jamie i was like we we're moving and i was like get something in the city no more fires <laughs> no wondering. more floods yeah. <laughs> so uh yeah we live in santa Ana now and that's uh it worked out because uh the shop that we have now is is really close to our house so it's, it's a pretty short drive to work and back nice mm-hmm. did you have a shop before that when all of that, or you were just no, you were that was all. In the it was garage. all in the garage. Okay. And cool. so I, um, after that stuff, I, I actually bought the warehouse space with intent to just store my cars and then have more room to work on my own cars. Uh, and it, and I worked on that. Jamie and I uh, worked on that place, sort of rebuilding it and um, doing the floors and the paint and the electrical and stuff. And then we, uh, we decided to, I said to hire some people because I was doing the math and it was like, there was no way, like the Mustang took three years to build the GT 40 took two years to build. And it's like, if I have a list of 10 cars and it takes three years to build each one, then that's 30 (laughs) years. It's like, I I can't, I'm not going to be able to do this when I'm 80. Right. So, (laughs) So I'm going to need some help. And so that was the, that was what prompted me to actually hire some people nice. and, so. and really turn it into a business because you seem to have covered every detail from the build books mm-hmm. to every detail on your car. Yeah. Well, we're trying, I think just to figure out, uh, how to make the business work at this point. Um, you know, I always tell people the worst case scenario is that I have a lot of really cool cars that I design myself, <laughs> right. right? It's like, like it would be like, how There's cool would it? Thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mud in the sinks. Like lots of people have car collections, right? Mm-hmm. But what if I had a car collection that was all cars that I built or at least designed, you know? So yeah. uh, that was sort of worst case scenario. It was like, well, let's, let's build these cars and then, and then I can drive them for a while and then I can sell some. And maybe if I really love them, I'll keep some yeah. and, and we'll just see what happens. But the reality is, I think is that we need to have sort of multiple revenue streams. And so part of it is the books have been super successful, the build books and uh, again, my inspiration for that wasn't, wasn't business oriented. Uh, I built the OG build book, the first version of that. I, I did online with like one of those wedding book planners, like yeah. you can upload photos and, and they put it in a nice book and print it and stuff for you. <laughs> no, like- um, and I just did that for friends and family, but everybody who looked at it was like, this is so cool. Yeah, I want one. And it was like, I, so so we, you know, I printed a bunch of them and then started to sell them. And it really charts so cool. your journey with each of the cars. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I try to do. Um, I write them and I'm not, I'm not trying to be like super grammatically correct, proper English, um, which a couple people have complained about. 
Uh, my intent is that it's like I, I the text in there is the way that I talk, <laughs> you know, I and like uh, and it yeah. is about sort of if you're into cars and you want to know like how I built the fender flares or you know, if you're doing something similar, you want to build your own headers or something like, right. I mean, I'm not saying it's the right way to do anything, but it is, it is how I did it. I kind of document that stuff and share it with people because everything I've learned, I learned from somebody else. Yeah. So, so you're just a conduit of information. Yeah. I just want to just pass it on, Yeah. you know, so that's part of what the build books are. Uh, but also I think there's a human element in them too, where like, like I said, the mudslide and the fires are in the GT 40 book yeah. and the galaxy book covers like hiring a team and getting the real shop and stuff. So every, every book is a little bit of my own sort of personal journey. Um, but so we're doing that. We sell some t-shirts. We're working right now with a guy. Um, it's a red X thread. His name's Matt. And uh, he's a super, really good clothing designer. Also has a graphic design but designer background. Yeah. So like he clicked and he kind of hit me up through Instagram just because the cars were really inspiring him. Yeah. And so we're working on a clothing line, which is going to be super oh. cool. Um, so we're just trying to do, I don't know, anything that's anything that's cool. <laughs> I like that. Those are all things we think are cool. Right. Yeah, like, ooh, close. Can you make those pants long enough? Well, and you said, so Jamie is a seamstress. Like, what, what is yeah. her background? Is she uh, part of that too then? or Yeah, so she's, uh, she has also has, a, she would, in, in, in college, she was in art classes as well. So we, we kind of have that in common, although our art's very different. Yeah. Um, and we met, I met her at a video game company in, nice. in Seattle. So we wound up working together and then started dating. Uh, and then we worked together at, I think, two or three other video game companies afterwards. Um, and then she got out of games before I did. And then um, uh, she got into Rabbit Rescue. So oh. yeah. Wow. So. Um, Sometimes, like especially with rabbits, they're they're you know they're a, like a cheaper to buy pet. So a domesticated rabbit. Yeah, okay. yeah. So okay. if something goes wrong with a rabbit, a lot of times people will just like put them down or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, and even even the sh local shelters are like we can't afford to like have a broken leg fixed or whatever. Got it. Um, so. She was working with some other ladies that were running uh, basically a, a rescue. And so they would take in rabbits from shelters and stuff that were That's cool. that needed medical attention that, uh, that other people weren't willing to pay for. Yeah. And so then the, this group, uh, through donations and stuff like that, would uh, rehabilitate the rabbits and then try to rehome them. And so she did that for a few years. And I think ultimately it's just like too stressful. You know, it's always, you're always fighting this seemingly losing battle. Yeah, you're trying to help them and sometimes yeah. they might not make it either. So. Yeah, so it's a pretty tough, Yeah, it's a pretty tough thing to be involved in. So uh, last year they stopped running the rabbit rescue, but we still have, I think right now we have 14 rabbits in the house. Oh, wow. So That's cool. <laughs> I used Did to have I used to have rabbits when I was a kid yeah. too. Yeah. Greg's mom always had rabbits. Yeah. Because dad didn't want a dog or a cat. Yeah. No, they're yeah. cool. I love so they all have names. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> so cool. Oh yeah. They all have names. They all have their own personalities. Are those your kids then? Yeah. Yeah. Those in the cars. <laughs> in the cars. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Yeah, for a while we had an agreement. It was uh, she could have as many rabbits as I could have cars. Oh, <laughs> I like seemed How many cars are you up to? Seemed fair. <laughs> do, you have, do you have? I don't know. I don't want to count. No, oh. I don't want to know. Ooh, I like that. <laughs> and you're only building the cars. If I've understood this correctly, you're only building the cars for yourself, or are you commissioned by others to build uh, really so cool cars? So far, so far, I've just only built the stuff that we were interested in building um, the, now, the 67 Mustang that we built. That's our newest build. And that car we bought with intent to sell. So okay. I already have a Mustang and it's not gonna, you know, the new car is way nicer than mine in almost every way. Uh, but 
you know, mine is the thing that started it all. And so I'm, I would never get rid of that. But I've always, even with my, even with the modern cars that I've owned, I've never understood having multiple cars that kind of serve the same purpose or the same theme or whatever, you know? So, um, it doesn't make any sense for me to have a Mustang that sort of, I mean, it's also a unibody. It's also got the same suspension on it and stuff. I had just so many people hitting me up to try to buy the OG Mustang that I thought, well, maybe we'll just build another one in a, you know, slightly keep, give it a different theme and whatever to make it interesting and fun to build. But then we just plan on selling that. So, and I'm pretty sure that one's been pretty successful too at the SEMA show again. Yeah, yeah. So uh, this year, this past year, we showed the Galaxy, the 64 Galaxy, which I did buy and start as my own personal build. Um, and then the 67. And I, it was early, uh, I guess, uh, early 20. I remember it was 22, it was 22. I was talking to the team about it and I was like, I would like to have our own booth have like a ruffian cars booth like that mm. would be cool like i've shown i've had the gt40 was at sema before the yeah. mustang was at sema i know we could go to toyo tread pass yeah. i know we could probably go to some other um other places as well or other booths as well but i really wanted to have our own booth but i didn't want to do it with one car you know i felt like it's too expensive like if if we did it yeah. if we had two cars then we could go and so that was the discussion with the team and really the, the, what got scary is uh, SEMA has you lock in like fairly early in the year. Right now they're doing it right yeah. now for this yeah. year's show. They're so like, you got to pay picking, by this. Yep. And, and I was it's like, happening. <laughs> how am I going to know if we're going to be able to finish? But you know, I've not yeah. that I've run the shop. Not well, that we, this, welcome to the SEMA builds. <laughs> yeah. These are the first two cars that we've built as a shop. You know, the galaxy is the most outrageous crazy intense build that I've ever been involved with the Mustang at least was a car that I had built the OG. So, and a lot of it was the same parts and stuff. So I felt like at least that one was one that I was familiar with that I could give some sort of estimate on, but the galaxy, I just didn't know. Mm -hmm. So we wound up, you know, like everybody, uh, the first time we had those cars running and moving under their own power was Sunday. <laughs> Right. <laughs> and move in is Monday or, yeah. or Sunday. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So Sunday. Most people are firing them up back home and like, we have to get them on a trailer to get there. Sunday, we rolled them out of the shop on straight onto a trailer. And then and, uh, then on Monday, they unloaded and went into the, the SEMA hall. So yep. that was pretty crazy and exciting and scary and <laughs> uh all of the emotions um but then we we got some awards for both cars um and what kind of blew my mind was uh roadster shop yeah did uh i don't it still amazes me that they do it but they did a uh they do it they obviously they have like a huge party and so many cars there are on roadster shop yeah, chassis. On the chassis it's yeah. ridiculous how many cars yeah are on so they do a they build they do a good a, chassis. Yeah, they do a best on RS award, which is like all these cars yeah. that are on roaster shop competing. But they do a best of the rest, which is basically if you're not on roaster shop. So they come up to the booth and they're like, "Hey, we just we want the you know we're inviting you to our our party and the 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 '67 Mustang is nominated for this award and they." hand it to me and I just see RS on there and I'm like, it's not on that. I'm like super confused. <laughs> and they were kind of bummed because they thought that I was like not excited, but I was just concerned. I was concerned like, that- You like picked maybe, me, but you're not, it's yeah, not right. Maybe, maybe you guys didn't get the memo, but this is not on a, this is not on a roaster shop chassis, but then they explained it and I was like, okay, okay, cool, cool, cool. Um, so just to get noticed by especially I love the builds that they that oh, they do yeah. there. Like, oh yeah, they're they're so like right up my alley. A lot of the cars that they've built, I know that you know you always have customer input and stuff. But a lot of the cars they built like are are some of my favorites of past SEMAs and whatnot. Yeah. So the fact that they even 
noticed us, let alone invited us to their party. It's like this and, honor that, yeah. Yeah, so of course it was full imposter syndrome when we went to the party, like we didn't know where to go. Do we have seats? Do we not have seats? Right. We just hang right. out. Like, and there's all these people that I'm like, oh God, there's, you know, there's the Kandigit guys and there's the, you right. you know. Oh, and there was so everyone there. Yeah, yeah. everybody. We there. Yeah, and it was totally. wild. We're like, what are we doing here at this party? <laughs> Uh, and so then I, uh, we sat, we sat down, they gave us a, a booth and we sat down and I knew that we were in, in, you know, as a nominated, but I, I did, honestly didn't have any sort of expectations. Like, I don't know whether it's just, you're too close to the stuff that you build, but like, I just see all the, all the areas that we're shy on, you know, yeah, that we yes. can be better on, you know, and I walk around SEMA and I just see yeah. what everybody else is doing. And I'm like, oh, like I, I, I actually walked the first time I walked, uh, when we were at SEMA, the first time I walked, uh, central or just come back kind of depressed because I was like, <laughs> man, there's like the paint, you know, and the finish and, and, and just so many things on all the cars that I'm like, Oh, we got a long, you know, we got a lot of work to do. We got a long ways to go. So anyway, we wound up, they, they start announcing this award. They tell us that we're in the top three, which mm. again is shocking, but I'm like, okay, yeah, that's cool. That's yeah. cool. That'll be our like, yeah. go home as a win, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, third place or whatnot. Yeah. And then, they, and, then <laughs> yeah. Yeah. and then they announced, yeah, and then they announced third place, and then they announced second place, and it ain't us. So then it was like, holy crap! So then yeah. they, then we win this award. I love it. We win this award, and they call, and so I got to go up and get this award. <laughs> I don't know what to say. It's like I'm in front of all these, Thanks. all these people I've only seen on. Television. television. Seriously, that, it, I, there there are so many people there yeah, that I super look up to and yeah. stuff. And so I was just I was not prepared. Like the whole time, I could have been thinking about what to say and looked smart, but. <laughs> I, well, you were I was a, smart. You, it, yeah, it I was, was a, a deer moment. In the headlights. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, but it was, but it was really, really cool. And so, the thing that coming away from that did for us was that everybody in the industry knows us now. Yeah. So it's made partnerships on all of the new builds like way easy because That's awesome. I can talk to somebody. Typically, what happens is I, uh, you know, I'll, I'll talk to somebody and say, "Hey, I really need a." I need to order a transmission and I won't even, I'm not, I'm not asking or anything. And yeah. they're like, Oh, you're the, you're the ruffian guys. Like we, <laughs> we saw your booth. You're, we love your cars. We'd like to help you out on this. And I'm like, okay. Sweet. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. That's that the mean, cool part of it. Huh? <laughs> yeah. That means you can just build more cars. Well, I mean, it means that, uh, it means that it's a little bit closer to, I guess, breaking even on, on a car if we build it and our costs are reduced you know, then it's more likely yeah. that we can recoup, recoup those costs later. So honestly, I, you know, with the business I told, so that my proposition to the, to everybody that came to work for me was like, I put enough money aside where we can run the company for five years. And I said, cause I know it's going to take time, Yeah, you know, to like, I, I've already, I built a game studio and, and ran it for, now it's been like 14 years and I built that company uh, with, with, with the team, right? And, yeah. uh, and sold it. And so I know what that takes. And it took us 10 years in video games to actually start just not paying the bills. Yep. Now actually starting to squirrel some money away. Yep. So 10 years. So I told the team, I'll give us five years. Uh, and if we break even the end of five years, then we can you know, on the fifth year, if that year is we, we, we can break even, then we can just keep going. Cool. But if, if, if we don't, then we got to look at things real hard. Yeah. Um, and my, and my buddy Tom was like, so you're telling me the worst case scenario is we're going to build some really cool cars <laughs> for five yeah. years. For five years. Yeah. Sounds <laughs> badass to me. <laughs> I know. How did you find your team? Because I, what you're putting out yeah. seems in my opinion, very specialty and mm -hmm. it's not just run of the mill talent that you're looking yeah, for. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, it's just like, it's life. It's, it's how everything seems to happen. But, um, two people that work for me, uh, 
I knew from video games, mm, interesting. Um, which is neat. And then two people that work for me uh, worked at a repair shop next door. So like having some real certified technicians that have some real <laughs> that training. Help. And, yeah, that's good. We should probably have people who know what they're doing. Yeah, Got we it. We should probably we should probably have a few of those. Um, and then and then one uh, one guy that I have uh, on the team worked for. Uh, I had a '72 Pantera that that uh, cool. I did a lot of work on, uh, but I didn't know how to do any metal work at all okay. and so uh this guy did the metal work and of course i did wide body I put the flares on it and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> uh and this guy did the metal work on my pantera like on like 20 years ago or something mm -hmm. so uh it was it was kind of one of those scenarios where it was like i know i know a guy you know when it when it came to needing somebody to help with sheet metal and stuff like that so uh, we brought him over, um, and now we've got another guy uh, that started that that was running his own shop and was like, "Screw this! It's too much! It's too much work and headache, and I don't like it. And I yeah. just I just want to work on build build cars." Yeah, you know. So uh, he came over. So um, yeah, it's just. But then, the, like the paint, the paint shop. Um, Max from Auto Addiction OC uh, came. Uh, I've got a. I was storing some cars at a storage facility in Orange County, and the Mustang was getting kind of. I was probably eight months away, I thought, from getting the car painted, and I was trying to find a shop that would that would paint uh, the car. And actually, surprisingly, like a lot of body shops are not interested. Like they just oh yeah just custom stuff. Yeah. yeah no yeah yeah Hard so. To find. It was either like just a straight up no, or it was like, if you, if you get in line now, we can, we'll maybe have a slot in six months. Yeah. And, and was, you won't get it right away either. Yeah. <laughs> when will you get it? You don't know. <laughs> yeah. So, um, but, but he had a friend who had painted his car and he referred me to Max and, and I emailed Max and I sent him pictures of my car and he was like super interested and he was like, Hey, can I can I come look at the car maybe and see it in person? And then we can talk about things in more detail. And I just thought it was like really like, obviously that's, that's not like everyone else brushed me off. Sure. And, and he was like, this car is really special and I want to do it and I want to make it happen. So whatever it takes, you know? And so now he's painted all of, Oh, that's cool. You know, he and his team, painted all of the cars, ruffian cars, and slated to do two more by the end of next year. Um, so, you know, those, a lot of times those, uh, those friendships or relationships, somebody puts out the effort, like that stuff, that stuff lasts a long time. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's definitely hard to find other people that, um, understand or want to live up to like the quality that you're looking mm -hmm. for, the standards that you have, you know, or yeah, something that like that shared vision that says yeah. I'm gonna, I, I get to put my name on a ruffian car. That's what yeah, I'd it's, want. It's, it's super cool. Well, I'm glad you found that team. That is pretty cool. Yeah. You know, yeah. I was going to ask you, you know, uh, what's your like dream car, but I mean, <laughs> I don't feel like that's a question <laughs> that's for this guy. That's funny. Uh, sh there is, there's, there is okay. still stuff. Uh, Sean and I were talking just earlier earlier today, I was walking through a storage facility here. Um, we were talking about, uh, I think there's a couple cars that are now sort of unobtainium, at least for me, uh, <laughs> that, that didn't, right. that didn't really used to be, but like a F40, a Ferrari F40. Mm -hmm. Um, and I, I, there's not really other Ferraris that I'm like, Oh, I, I really want one of those, but a Ferrari F40 for whatever reason, uh, it's kind of the bad boy of the Ferraris. Like, yeah, isn't that Most, like a million dollar car? Oh, they're more than okay. they're yeah yeah they're way up there now. But they're but they're turboed and stuff. And back in the when Ferraris, you know, traditionalists were like didn't want them to be turboed or anything. So I I like the oddball sort of. Obviously, it works with ruffian, you can tell. But like the oddball sort of bad 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 guy, uh, cars like so the F forty is definitely one that. Uh, that I, I wish I had obviously a, a Lamborghini Countach. I know they're terrible to drive and everything, but they, 
especially the early, early, early ones, like the like the very first couple of years of them were so cool looking. Then they it's kept nostalgia for you, yeah. yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of that. Uh, cars are for me are are super super emotional. Yeah, yeah. Like it's very it's very much sort of the mental image of what the car is, as well as it as as well as how it drives and stuff. But um, they got to make me feel something. Yeah. You know, at least at least the cars that I you know, if I'm just driving to work, like whatever. But. <laughs> I don't know. Still, you got to have a good car. Yeah. I mean, no. Yeah. What you, what's I, your daily driver then? So my daily is a Rivian. Okay. Uh, the pickup well, that's truck. Cool. Those are nice. I mean, those things are insane. Yeah. Like uh, I was. I mean, the off-road great too. <laughs> it's, that truck it weighs seven thousand pounds and it goes zero to sixty in three seconds, which is like a bullet. Like <laughs> like McLaren. <laughs> yeah. You know, McLaren 720S. You like to go fast. We got that. It's, like, <laughs> right. it's just, it, it like boggles my yeah. mind, you know, what electric motors. And I know. What they can do now. So, uh, but that, that, that's about, you know, for me, like I wind up hauling tires to get a mounted and balance. I got to pick up, you know, so it's, it's a truck. It can haul stuff. Uh, but I also like to drive and we go to lunch together every day at the shop. So then it's got four doors so we can, and then, uh, it's just about, and it's I, the practical vehicle is what he's it saying. Is, yeah. It is. I've <laughs> only truck. washed it like once since I bought it. Like it's a, you know, it gets treated like a shop truck. Um, <laughs> did you ever think that you drive an electric vehicle after? Yeah. Uh, I, it, I like, I like all the things. Um, oh. so it, I mean, like I said, I, I, I'm fascinated with how things work. Yeah. And, um, and growing up, I also was super into RC cars. Oh, yeah. Like the hardcore, like the really fast, gnarly. So I had like started with electric ones and then Went I got the, into yeah. nitro. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, brushless came back out or came out and then brushless was like faster than nitro. And, <laughs> and so like that's all like mini versions of what I'm playing with now. Right. You know? So uh, for me, it just made sense. Like I actually understood what was going on when you press the throttle pedal on a Tesla. Like I understand there's a speed controller and how motors, the electric motors work and stuff like that. So I geek out on all of it. Like I really, really want to mix more of it. I think the, the trend of like what you see Ferrari doing with like the, I think it's like the 296 where it's like a hybrid. It has a twin turbo or a turbo V6 plus an electric motor. I really want to do that with like a Mustang and stuff, but it's, it's, um, right now the, uh, the aftermarket electric stuff is still like super, super young and mm -hmm. really complicated and hard to deal with. Um, but as soon as that stuff matures a little bit more, um, I think that's, that's going to be fun is mixing that stuff in. Sounds like it. Sounds like you have some new projects uh, <laughs> spinning around up yeah. there in your head, huh? <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's always, yeah. I, anytime you're thinking about a build, you're thinking about what the theme is and what motor is going to make the most sense in there or be the coolest in there. And it's different for every car. So the, 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 electric, the electric Mustang thing we were wanting to uh, do, do a... Um, a mid-engine Mustang with an electric motor up front and do it like, like Batman style. <laughs> it it makes it sense, like right? Batman, yeah. Batman would have a, he wouldn't care. You could go stealth mode in it, right? Full stealth. Like oh my gosh. It's, it's so sad. We have to wind everything up. I know. Did you have any more questions? Well, the last question would be alive or dead. Who would you want to sit down and have a meal with? And why? A meal. Uh, okay, a beer. A beer, uh, yeah, chat, yeah. whatever. Yeah, <laughs> you know, there's so many people that I look up to or, but I'm always, I'm also self-conscious. Like, I feel like I wouldn't be comfortable sitting, sitting with someone unless there was something in common there. Mm. So I, I would say Keanu Reeves because, Ooh, I like that. Uh, you know, he's like super into motorcycles. Yep. He's yes. like super cool. 
uh, it would be fun to talk to him. And I think at least, at least that bridges the, the sort of, uh, I don't know, the awkwardness of like, you know, I've met a couple of famous people before. I'm like, I don't know what, what could I possibly say yeah, that yeah. would, I drive this cool car that would make, yeah, <laughs> I'd start but yeah, right? like he's saying, that. some people yeah. aren't yeah. in the cars or yeah. something. Like, so I get it. We I don't know, know them. Know. The bikes <laughs> that they make are the, the art. Yeah. 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 They're so they're insane. cool. Oh, yeah. yeah. The kind of a similar, a similar vibe as well. Like they're very, they're very sort of graphic designery, like bold, you know? Yeah. So yeah, that would be fun. I love that. That's a good, yeah, I agree. How can people follow you? And where? Ooh, the best place is uh, is at Ruffian Cars on Instagram. Uh, I also sometimes update our website. It's not super. It's I not like that super sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> um, but you can buy these amazing build right. books on there. So yeah. they are so cool. It's really cool. I mean, I'm a tactile person also. So mm-hmm. just to go through these and have this... Uh, these are great for your uh, coffee table. Coffee yeah. table books. Like right everybody there. who comes over will sit down and flip through them. And those are the right people that you have sitting yeah. around yeah. if they want to go through those books. <laughs> those right? are great yeah. Christmas ideas. Uh, I know totally I agree. They're good for 4th of July too. So. We'll oh, <laughs> it's like why for the July? Because it's coming up. July. Got it. Okay. <laughs> I couldn't think of another holiday. I know. It's lame. Well, it's been amazing having you. I mean, yeah. we could sit here all day and talk about all the cool cars. I know. Yeah, your there's ideas. not much I can talk a lot about, but cars I can you definitely. Did, right? I can keep going. Well, you yeah. came to the right table. Yeah. Yes, you did. Oh my gosh, Chris, thank you so much. Yeah, thanks for having me. This was great. Yeah, it's really definitely. nice to meet you too. Good picking on guests, right? Oh, definitely. definitely. Oh, I am all about the style, the design, all of this. It's yeah. fantastic. Oh my gosh. Thank you guys so much for tuning in to High Octane Hustle. I'm Fastlane Jane. And I'm Design Muse. And this was Chris Ashton at Ruffian Cars. Woo! Yes. Thank, Thank you. you. Woo! Good job. That was awesome. Yes. Yeah. I love you.